I still don't understand why they haven't played Kyra Lewis or Jackson Hayes more than they have, especially with Zion out. One team you brought up more on Twitter that I wanted to get into was the New Orleans Pelicans because you ran afoul of our friend Mason Ginsburg by pitching that. So I wanted you to have you have this floor. Uh, <laughs> explain your rationale why you think the Pelicans are in the, the tier of teams that need to make major changes. Well, so I think, honestly, I think Mason and I agree on certain, certain things about this. I mean, it, this isn't the finished product. And mm-hmm. what I was saying is they need to figure out kind of where they want to go. When I say drastic changes, I'm not necessarily suggesting that they pivot into a new rebuild or they sell the farm to get better right now. It's it's about understanding where you're going. Like, mm-hmm. I still don't understand why they haven't played Kyra Lewis or Jackson Hayes more than they have, especially with Zion out. Like, you know you're not going to be super competitive in those games, so why not give them the reps? And that bothered me because, like, if you don't give those guys the reps, you're, you're basically losing in two categories. You're losing in not developing them. You're also losing in not building them trade value. Because if opponent te- opposing teams are looking at that lineup and, and or that roster and they're going to go, well, you know what? They don't even that bad team doesn't even trust Kyra Lewis to take the floor. So what kind yeah. of trade value could he even have? Like, you need to see what you have in those guys. Kyra Lewis was too good in college not to get a fair shake in the NBA. And when he ended up on the Pelicans, I remember telling you, I don't even, I don't even remember if we were recording or if it was off air, but I remember telling you, I don't know if that's the place for him because everything is so Scion centric right. that it just felt like a bad fit. So what I kind of want to see here from New Orleans is just pick a direction. If you want to go for a win now because of Scion's weird situation, then, then f- play the kit so you can amp up their trade value and you can ship them off for established veterans near the trade deadline. That's that's kind of it, because if they don't do that, well, then what are they doing? Right now they're playing Thomas Etzeranski and Garrett Temple. Like, why? Why? What, what good does that do you at this point? Yeah, I mean, because the West is so bad, it's keeping them within potential striking distance of the play-in tournament. I mean, right now they are five games back of the Denver Nuggets, and we're recording this during the Nuggets-Kings game, so I'm going to, yeah, oh no, it, it's over. So, uh, yeah, they're now five. Oh, the Nuggets-Knicks game, you mean? Oh, yeah, Nuggets, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes, they are now five and a half games back of the Nuggets for that final play-in spot. Um, so, you know, if Zion just recently had another setback with his foot so we don't know when he's gonna debut like at this point i'm just wondering if they're like charlie brown in the football and the pelicans are gonna keep being like we swear zaya's coming soon and we get to like february it's like oh yeah just wait till after the all-star break he's coming yeah like I, i don't i wouldn't put too much stock into expectations for zion williamson this year at all right um so it's a fair point. Like what what is their plan this year? Because with all the well, stuff that came out. Long term too, not just this year. Long term yeah. too. Yeah. Well, because with all the stuff that came out about Zion and being unhappy and wanting to compete, and now they are where they are in large part because he hasn't played for the first 25 games. Like, does this end up being a lost season? What does that mean for Zion? Like you know, in a just and fair world, Zion would look at this roster. If, like, let's say he he returns, he plays thirty or forty games, they miss the playing tournament, whatever. He would look at this team and be like, "Well, I missed so much time. Of course, they were going to struggle without me. I want to give this another shot. It's unfair to hold that against them." The NBA is not a just and fair world, and it will not be surprising at all. If Zion Williamson, with his contract extension, him becoming eligible for it next summer, says, no, I, I want out of New Orleans. I don't want to sign this extension. He pulls like what Chris Dobbs did to right. the next a couple of years ago. So I, I think that's the fear that New Orleans has to be operating with in the back of their minds. And yeah. I think that's probably why they're trying to accelerate 
this win now window to the extent that they are. But it's a fair point. More like, what can they do between now and the time that Zion returns? Like, I guess they are playing these, you know, the vets, the Temples, and the Sadaranskis over some of their younger guys. Uh, Hernan Gomez, who has actually been playing well for them recently. He has. He's been playing really well. Mason pointed that out too, and that's that's very true. Yeah. So they're, you know, they're playing those guys to potentially set themselves up for a late season run. Like it wouldn't surprise me if when they fall or if they fall out of the playoff race or, you know, if Zion's return keeps getting delayed, those guys start to get more minutes late in the year. Um, But it'll be after the trade deadline. Like it'll it'll set them up for a deal next summer. Right. Uh, You know, I think the fundamental question with the Pelicans still remains like, (laughs) How much confidence do you have that Zion wants to sign this extension and stay long term? Or, I mean, hell, even just sign the extension. Like, those are almost two separate things at this point. Now that, you know, it's based on the precedent that Ben Simmons is setting. Like, even if he signs the extension, are you sure that in a year or two after he's going to not try to demand the trade? Uh, no, not at all. I, honestly, I think, I think the bigger issue at hand is something much larger than that and and mason kind of alluded to it in our conversation on twitter as well he basically said that they shouldn't be where they are right now this is Zion's third season this shouldn't yeah. be a discussion of going all in on the win now train and right. he's absolutely right this entire Zion williamson era in new orleans where it's all about hey get better right now because i want to win right now dude you're barely out of your teenage years relax right right and it's also concerning to me because what is science rust here is that because he knows his body is not gonna uphold like withstand for mm-hmm. a long time like I, that's just me speculating but like I, I don't understand why he's such in such a rush because he's also undermining the team by doing so like yeah. david griffin and the entire organization they've made mistakes as well but like they at least the logic is fine they saw, all right, we have Zion Williamson. Let's build him a team long-term that can compete for 10 to 12 years. Mm-hmm. That's why they went out and got all those draft picks and, and whatnot. Or, I mean, additional or just, you know, got to get to Kyra Lewis and, and Nikhil Alexander-Walker and uh, Jackson Hayes and all those guys, right? And Herb Jones this year, as well as Trey Murphy, I'm looking over the roster right now. They also have Brandon Ingram from from the Lakers. Like, they have some components. They have young players who, in theory, should be able to be paired with Zion for the next many, many years to provide him with enough talent to eventually become contenders. Mm-hmm. But now Zion is basically flipping the, the, the script and going, you know what? No, that's not good enough. I want to win right now. And now you're leaving the Pelicans in a situation where they go, well, the, these guys aren't developed yet. Like they don't have the right. trade value. We can't we can't cash them in for what you want. Like <laughs> right. we would love to add a Carl Anthony Towns to the roster to help you out and give you more spacing, and to give someone to give you a rebounding presence alongside you. We would love to do that, but you know what? These guys are babies. Like they're just out of college. We, we haven't. They haven't gotten the necessary NBA experience yet to actually have that sort of value. So so where do you go from here? And that's where I that's why I put them on the list. I mean, I'm just I just think it's such a mess of a roster. In well, it's a mess of a roster in the sense that Sion is pushing everything from from the behind the scenes. Yeah. Based on what Sion wants and based on whether the this roster is, those two things don't communicate well with each other. Yeah, I mean I just, it's, all these two guys are always going to be linked because they went one and two in this draft. But you look at the Pelicans since they drafted Zion versus the Grizzlies since they drafted John Morant. Right. And, you know, it's unfair, again, to compare their records this season because Zion has yet to play. And I know Jaws now out with a knee injury for a couple weeks. But right now, the Grizzlies are fourth in the West at only 12 and 10. So that, again, speaks to the relative down year that the West is having, but like the Grizzlies have taken the r- correct approach to team building around John Morant. They have been in no real hurry to build a contender around him because they know they have this 
extended window. You know, they've made plenty of mistakes too. The Justice Winslow trade did not go in their favor. It was a gamble and it didn't work for them. Agreed. You could argue that so far the returns on the, you know, the trade up for Zaire Williams and tra- swapping Stephen Adams and Jonas Valanciunas, given how well Valanciunas has played in New Orleans, you could argue that was a bad move as well. But, you know, they did it in part to help take the training wheels off for Jaron Jackson Jr. Yeah, I was about and, to use that term as well. That has been that has been how that trade has been uh, marketed as taking off the training wheels. I, I kind of see it. And it's, I mean, honestly, it's been working. Like Jaron yeah. Jackson got off to a slow start this year, but lately he's been phenomenal. And like, that's, that's the key for your long-term future. None of this other, none of the other roster filler really matters right now i mean like sure hopefully desmond bain ends up being a nice steal of 30 which it seems like he is you know yeah hopefully zaire williams pans out hopefully you know you can keep building around deanthe melton dylan brooks tyus jones and some complimentary guys brandon clark has been better this year than he was last year so like you know of course you want to have productive young guys beyond those two but those two are your future so For the Pelicans, you have to ultimately figure out, is Brandon Ingram the future next to Zion? Do we have another long-term keeper other than Zion? Assuming, again, that Zion is willing to stay. And unfortunately, they just can't answer those questions right now because Zion is out. So, like, I, I don't think the Pelicans need to be in a rush to make any moves. They're not in the Portland or any and the camps for me where like, I'm going to be mad if they stand relatively pat at the trade deadline. But next off season is setting up to be extremely pivotal for them. We'll see what happens, you know, if or when Zion signs an extension or what, who knows on that front. Um, but, you know, if, if this season ends up being somewhat lost because of his injuries. Like, I I don't think they can afford another season like this. I have a question as well. I I know you saw it dur- during the course of summer as well. The Pelicans were all in on Nikhil Alexander-Walker. This, yeah. this third year was going to be the breakout. He was going to be an all-star or close to it, <sighs> all that thing. I was rooting so hard for them to be right. It's, I really was because that would have been the big thing that they needed to really accelerate the entire process. I think because mm-hmm. even though he's young and and Brandon Ingram is still young, like if you had a very productive Nikhil Alexander Walker, a very productive Brandon Ingram, you could make the argument that that's a trio that's good enough, along with Sion, of course, where you could stay competitive while the rest of the roster developed. But it looks like Nikhil is going to need a lot of time still to develop himself. Yeah. Which I can't figure out if he is like, it sounds sounds so rough to call him patient zero because that's not fair. I mean, you know, I, I think those expectations that were put on him were t- entirely unrealistic and entirely unfair to him. Uh, <clears throat> but like him not developing, how big of an issue has that been for him? I, I think it's been major. Yeah. And to be clear, again, it's only 25 games so far this season. I know Mason and Shamit Dua have made this point on Twitter a lot. Like once Zion comes back, everyone slides down a peg and they're yeah. in more comfortable roles. And with all the attention, the defensive attention that Zion attracts, right, maybe right. that helps unlock Alexander Walker. But I agree, the early returns have not been super positive in that regard right 36.7 percent shooting from the field overall i don't need, I, I mean even if he was playing a tier over his responsibility level like that's just shoddy that's yeah. that's really bad i mean he's not even getting to the line he's hitting under 30 percent on threes i get it and i'm not putting that at, on the at the at his feet necessarily i understand that scion being out just leaves everyone in a bad situation Oh man, see, and, and this is what it comes down to, Brian. We need to have that conversation. We need to have it. Is Zion worth the trouble? If he's willing to stay in New Orleans, which is the 
two hundred million dollar question. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. 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 Fine. Fine. So let's let's roll with that. Then my follow up question is: Can he stay healthy? Right. That and that we can't answer. Right. Yeah. So those are two major question marks that's hovering over Sion at this point. One is: Is he the guy you can really build around? Is he going to be mature enough to actually be that team leader moving forward, or is it going to be drama, drama, drama? Mm-hmm. The second part of that is weight concerns, injury concerns, all of those things. Where it's just I'm sitting there just thinking, I mean, if the if the value for him right now is sky high, and I don't know if it even is because the guy has only played 85 games in his career, but if a team out there is willing to just give up everything for him, like, you, you gotta entertain it, right? Again, I think it comes down, like, if you're getting intel behind the scenes, I mean, I know there were reports last summer about his family wanting out right if you have a strong inkling that he is going to pull a Kristaps and refuse to sign the extension this summer yeah you have to entertain it but if you think there's a reasonable chance that he's going to sign the extension even if he does pull a Ben Simmons and tries to demand a trade a year or two from then Uh I, I, I don't think I mean I understand why you'd be inclined to, but the ceiling of Zion when healthy, I mean, he was putting up efficiency numbers around the rim last season that were unprecedented. Yeah, Uh, yeah, absolutely historic. Shaquille O'Neal level dominance. And he was only, you know, second season, hadn't played that much. Like, yeah, he's just such a unique player that, you know, I, I think if he can prove he can stay healthy, like maybe I, I mean there's no way that they're going to be able to actually succeed in doing this but like ideally you would build the injury protections like Joel Embiid had into his and that the Denver Nuggets wish they had in Michael Porter Jr's extension right now like I, I don't think Zion or his agent agree to it I think it's going to have to be a full five year fully guaranteed max um, I, I still think he's worth the trouble but I will say this on the point you brought up about you know, Kyra Lewis Jr., Jackson Hayes, and even Alexander Walker, who really hadn't gotten much of an opportunity before this year. Alexander Walker and Jackson Hayes are also eligible for extensions next summer. Yeah. So I don't think either guy is going to get one unless it's a super team friendly deal or unless, you know, Nikhil maybe turns his season around. But that speaks to the importance of letting these guys giving them the reps, giving them the minutes right now, because you're going to have to make a decision on them soon. And like, what incentive do you have to sign Jackson Hayes to an extension when you haven't seen all that much of him? Right. Yeah. I mean, hell, if if you go with Kyle Lewis, he's only played 1200 minutes in his career. Yeah. That's not not that's not enough uh, enough to go off. I just don't know what it is. I mean, you're giving all the minutes to to Herb Jones because of his defense, which, okay, great, but he's still behind the curve offensively. So I don't know if this is one of those things where the coaching staff is putting so much emphasis on defense that they're kind of forgetting the offensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. But like, you need to get your guys out there <laughs> and you need to test them out in a variety of roles. And it's, this is why I put them on the list, I, on, on my Twitter list of teams that I, kind of felt need this drastic changes because I don't know what they are. I don't know where they're going. I don't know what their plans are with Zion. I don't know what their plans is are without Zion if he should leave or get traded or whatever. I mean, everything is just, you can go in a million different directions here. Yeah. And that's why I'm kind of looking for a drastic change to show me and show everyone, oh, this is the path that we're on. 